So here we are once again in Wargame Red Dragon looking at the decks and here we have the Commonwealth deck. So the Commonwealth deck uh, is a combination of you know Australian, Canadian and uh, British units. For some reason I thought that there were uh, New, Ze New Zealand was included but maybe it wasn't. Um, I guess their units would be quite similar to the Australian ones anyway. Uh, so you have all the basic units, you've got the new sort of infantry command squads which are pretty handy, though I haven't included one this time. And you've got the sort of tank commands, the APC commands. I've took, taken the Grizzly CP because I actually really like the Grizzly. I don't know why, but World Game Man and Battle, I always found that they performed well for me. They're quick, and actually they have good amphibious speed, which may be useful in, in the uh, new game. And you know, I've taken a bit of uh, you know supply units. I try and uh, get like so if a nation is low on a particular in a particular area, and I normally pick one particular nation for all the useful things, like if I'm going to pick the Canadian commands then I tend to pick like the less represented countries to give all the supplies I don't know why that is I took the British supply rather than the Australian one because it has a bit less cost less so I can afford to lose it more often basically so let's take a look at the infantry and the infantry is pretty good actually for the Commonwealth so you've got a broad range of all the different sort of units you know Marines, SAS uh, SAS equivalents um, you've got the flamethrower guys, various sort of almost special forces, infantry, uh, ATGM from the lands. You've got the Maori. So you've got sort of like, uh, so the Commonwealth, you have the Maori and the Gurkhas as well, who are sort of recruits um, from outside the sort of average white uh, Commonwealth, uh, you know, military member. You've got things like the Diggers. I don't really know uh, much about the Diggers, but I guess they're just sort of. Uh, like the Fusiliers. So you've got all the normal units. So you can draw upon pretty much wherever you like. I mean, there's uh, some small variations in each one in terms of the weapon loadouts. Uh, so basically you just pick the units you like. You've got a broad range of transport as well. So you've got sort of really quick amphibious vehicles. The Australians have a lot of that sort of vehicle. You've got some hardier ones and some, and some aerial vehicles. I quite like the Saxon just for, for rushing around on roads because uh, it's cheap and effective. We got I brought some stormers as well. So the SAS are obviously going to have deliver with the Lynx, which is pretty handy. See some stuff still a work in progress. And yes, yeah, so I think the Javelin was the best anti-air available. And the Milan 2 was the best HGM. So they've got pretty pretty good things actually. Milan 2 is good, Javelin is good. Fusilier is just like the, you know, bread and butter. And the Royal Marines for those difficult situations where I'm struggling. And you've got the SAS to go out ahead and find out what's going on. Okay, so now we move on to support. So I mentioned before, you know, artillery is a big thing again, and the British M110 A2 is actually pretty good. Very good accuracy and does a lot of damage. So I quite like it. Works well. Uses up a lot of uh, supply over the course of, it, of the game, but it's well worth it. The Canadian ADATS is actually a really interesting. There's not many units like this in, in Wargame. Uh, including now, even now we're in Red Dragon and there's more nations. It's basically both an ATGM and an anti-air weapon. And so that is a sort of mixed blessing. It's actually very good at both roles. But obviously it draws a lot of fire and costs a lot. And you don't get many of them. But I do like it. And I, I've had lots of kills with them, so they're pretty good. We've got the Falcon, which is like a basic non-radar, you know, AAA defense against air aerial units goes up with the front line firing. I brought the tracked rapier which is radar missiles. So these are SAL missiles which means that uh, they uh, is that yeah so you've got the radar missiles and the SAL missiles. So the radar ones are going to cool down the ECM you know the sort of anti-radar planes but the ADATS doesn't so the ADATS is actually just fantastic. But the rapier is important as well and so I have brought it. You do have the non-radar rapier but in this case, because I have the ADATs, I'm not bringing it. You see, the Australians have essentially the same units. It's a different flag uh, stuck onto it. And you've got MRS if you like that, and you've got the mortar units. Though I never really use mortar because I'm just not very effective with it. There we go. There's various options. Some new units, Chieftain, Challenger, Marksman. But I think, yeah, they're radar, so don't tend to bring them. 
Moving on to tanks, so now we've got the, the infamous Challenger 2. I haven't brought it in this deck just because of availability. But yeah, it's pretty effective. 23 front armor is uh, pretty spectacular. And it even has pretty decent armor on the sides and uh, back and top and so on. So yeah, this is a pretty beasty. I mean, I've seen this, these guys take huge numbers of hits. Uh, I think in one game I was playing as uh, I think East, Eastern Europe, no, I was playing as China, and I used some ATGM helicopters, and I think it literally took about uh, two like uh, full loads, like 16 missiles, unloaded at the tank to take it out. So they're very tough. Expensive, though. And medium tanks, you've got the Chieftains. So generally you're going to stick probably with the British tanks if you're playing with the Commonwealth. So as you can see, I've taken the Challenger and Chieftain. So they're slow armoured tanks, uh, with de decent weaponry. They, you know, they can stand up to a slugfest, but they're not going to charge around the map overrunning your opponents. You can bring the Leopards. So I have brought some Leopard uh, C2s, just because they have like a decent stabiliser. So they can actually drive around, do, do an okay job. Uh, if I need to attack a position. In terms of recon, you've got a few options. In terms of recon helicopter. I think um, the Gazelle is still probably the best, just because if you look at the optics, it's still probably got the best optics. So you can either bring the Gazelle H AH1 or the Gazelle Sneb. But uh, I brought the AH1. And you've got the normal Jeeps. All the different special forces are available, and the basic infantry guys. So you've got the normal range, and obviously you've got the scimitar, and the scorpion, and the fox, and so on. Sort of armoured uh, recon. In this case I brought the coyote, because I think it's a pretty good armoured recon. Reasonably quick, to get to the front line. And I brought the little scout jeep, and the North Force Australian uh, scout infantry. Like the green jackets, basically. I think it was just, uh, you could get them in a cheap vehicle, which can move a bit quicker. I think the yeah. So you got like uh, the stalwart, and the Saxon, and, and the Saracen, but none of those are actually amphibious. Whereas the Aslav actually, oh no, the Aslav is. So yeah, that's correct. So yeah, so the Aslav has a bit more mobility, which when you're trying to put your scouts out on the front line, it's pretty advantageous. Basically, the Australian forces are quite similar to the British ones. Probably a, a few less options in some areas, but they do get a few good units like the the Cougar and the Adats. Moving on to the vehicles, of course they've also got the Tau 2s, which are pretty decent, but the British have some decent ones as well, like the Swing Fires. They can bring the Tau's uh, as well, I think. Oh, they bring the Milans, of course. But you've got the Tau's on the Jeeps, if you want. Or you can bring one of the Tours. So I bring a Tour, which is pretty expensive. Tau 2 Jeeps. All of those. Oh no, I've got the Aslavs. So these are the same as that transport vehicle. So they have the maneuverability, I guess. Pretty, pretty expensive, though. Dodgy, dodgy decision, I guess. Two expensive ATGMs in the Tau. Tau Jeep. So helicopters. You've got the Lynx 3, which is pretty good. Very expensive, but uh, has Hellfires and uh, Stingers, which is a combination. It's pretty fantastic. Allowing you to deal with both enemy helicopters and uh, enemy uh, vehicles pretty easily. Uh, if you don't want to put out the money for that, you can always bring like a Lynx or you know, CH-118 but pretty much you're going to want the Lynx one of the Lynxes and maybe a gunship, so in this case I brought the Australian gunship which has a minigun and uh, heat rockets, pretty cost effective, good for slowing down the enemy, take out enemy infantry, you know cheap scout if you only need to see short range and then the Lynx for when I see like a really expensive T-80 floating around or want to take out a recon helicopter. Aircraft, um, so the combined Commonwealth aircraft are pretty good. So we've got each of the different types, except I don't think I actually got any napalm in the end. Oh no, I did. So the Australians provide some napalm bombers. We've got the Harriers, which are well rounded. The Electric Voodoo, which is. So it's quite a cheap anti radar unit. It hasn't actually worked very well for me, if I'm honest. Most of the time it seems to get shot down. But maybe I'm just not very good at using it. But you can have, uh, so now you have, one of the problems in the old game was that a lot of uh, a lot of teams didn't really have any anti-radar units, any anti-radar planes. But uh, it's not so much of a problem anymore. And we've got some pretty good interceptors like the Tornado, but you've got the U Eurofighter as well. Got quite a good range to bring, if you're interested in that sort of thing. But I'd, I'd just stick to a fairly basic, basic set of units. 
So Harriers are well-rounded, Napalm, Anti-Radar, Interceptor. That's pretty much how, how I roll with planes. And obviously naval stuff. I don't think you get any special ships. Even though the British should really have some Royal Navy units, they don't. Which is a pity, but uh, I guess that's just the way, way things are. We're interested to see how the Navy turns out when they finally release it to us. But there you go. British. Well, Commonwealth. Um, well, it's British. You know, national uh, pride is too much. There's plenty of uh, good units from the Australians and the Canadians, which are better than the British alternatives. Four commands, I'm maybe a little short there, I might need to rearrange slightly. Uh, maybe bring some infantry command. Now I'm more used to using it. But yeah, so the Commonwealth Force is pretty good.